Welcome to the seventh uh, Spotlight Talk. No, this is the sixth Spotlight Talk of this conference. It's my pleasure to welcome CJ Carr. CJ Carr is a coder and musician who formed the hacking group Dada Bots with Zach Sukowski. They both attended the Berklee College of Music in Boston and as a hackathon team since 2012, they've accumulated an impressive set of accolades in the music technology and AI space. For instance, CJ just won Best Code at the Hammer Hackathon last week, which is the third time in the row that he has won an award at Hammer. So congratulations on that. Databots participated in the 2020 AI Song Competition as Germany, and their song was the actually the judge's favorite, and my favorite too, and came second place overall. One news organization that covered the event actually used the sub-headline, Runner Up from Germany, called for the Annihilation of Humanity. So this is CJ Carr presenting his Spotlight Talk titled 24-7 AI Death Metal, Eliminating Humans from Music. Welcome. Thanks, Bob. Uh, thanks for having me. Excited to share what I have for you all today. AI Death Metal, Eliminating Humans from Music. Attention, AI music researcher. Are you trapped in the ivory tower doing 100% research and 0% music? Come down, join the fun, get a glimpse into what it's like to be a bot band and engage the music culture. Hi, I'm CJ. My ancestors are famous for being late to battle. In fact, the family crest here translates to late but serious. Together with my best friend Zach, we're Databots. We do 80% music, we go on world tours, and we make AI death metal. Let me show you what that sounds like. So uh, we do neural synthesis. We're training neural nets to generate raw audio. And in 2016, most people uh, then and before were generating MIDI to make classical music and pop. Um, but you know, we like extreme music, and the only way we're going to make this stuff is with raw, raw audio nets. So we first started with uh, Kurt Cobain, and anyway, we used a sample RNN, which. Uh, it was originally built for speech synthesis. Uh, and this was the, f the very first example that we got after training it on uh, acapellas uh, of Kurt Cobain. It screamed Jesus. We, we thought this was some kind of seance. Uh, it definitely g gave us a, 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 a weird feeling. So uh, sample RNN, uh, originally for speech synthesis, uh, was a lot simpler of a model. Uh, after uh, uh, many months of hyperparameter tuning, uh, changing the normalization, adding uh, five layers of skip connections, um, we came up with th this variation, which was much better at Im uh, imitating music, um, and it has 66 million parameters. It could be trained on a, on a short data set, one album, in uh, a day or two. Um, uh, once we had our research, uh, I guess the, the many people in the audio space, uh, you know, r release, they publish their results like this, but we wanted to publish our results like this. So here is our Deep the Beatles album on our band camp. Uh, this is going to show you what it's sounded like to train a net on the Beatles. Uh, at first it sounds very noisy. Uh, after about half a day's worth of training. And after a day and a half of training. 
Results were stunning, but the, the most mind-blowing thing about this whole th process was the fact that pe people started reviewing these like they were real albums. You know, not, not, not very good ratings, but we were just Im impressed that music cri critics thought it was music at all. Um, and I, I think our, our best example at that time was this black metal album. Um, and one critic said... Uh, what saved this album when compared to the other releases is that it seems to have been an actual attempt to present the material in an as enjoyable a context as possible. <laughs> Which is totally what we were going for here. You know, um, m music research doesn't have to be uh, shared dryly in, in GitHub repos um, and plain HTML. Uh, you can go out and reach, reach out to the music culture um, because they think that what you're doing is incredible. Really weird. It's it makes me smile because I I'm actually kind of amazed by it. It obviously doesn't sound like much and is not that inspiring from a compositional standpoint but the the aesthetic is there i mean it's not perfectly clean and well assembled and smoothed out like the way that kralis's sound is but to me it's it sounds like i'm honestly listening to a live demo of kralis there's kind of exciting times so uh that particular album was trained on a, a one of our favorite bands kralis um and so we thought maybe we should actually reach out to them and let them know uh, what we did. We were like, hi, we trained a neural net on the raw audio of your album. We used it to generate this other album. If you want us to take it down or did we, if we misrepresented your art, please let us know. Uh, and they immediately responded very enthusiastically. Uh, that's awesome. Uh, I don't personally feel misrepresented at all. Thank you for asking and let's collaborate in the future. So the creative lunacy continued. Fans started making their own music videos to this music. So, uh, obviously, at this point, uh, lyric conditioning wasn't a thing yet. These are all made-up lyrics. Um, and it's really fun to try to imagine what's in the nonsense. Well, we thought we'd take this a step further. Uh, we trained a GPT-2 on Cannibal Corpse lyrics uh, and made a very long lyric video. This hard creation was created for uh, an art installation in Berlin. Um, and we, we were impressed by the international response to, to this kind of thing. Uh, and so uh, over time, uh, we got better at, uh, at this art form. Uh, most of that improvement was in how we prepared the data set. We, you know, removing silences, we're picking genres of music where the timbres are very consistent throughout, um, where Instead of combining the stereo, uh, the two channels together into a mono channel, we just concatenate um, individual left and right channels and we flip them uh, also uh, for data, data set augmentation to make it f uh, four times longer than the length of the album. Um, 
And uh, eventually we were able to make models that could produce a high abundance of listenability. Uh, as in the case of uh, this uh, tech death band uh, data set of Arcspire. Uh, everything it made was so good, we thought we could just live stream everything it makes as it generates. And that was Relentless Doppelganger. Relentless Doppelganger has been live for a year and a half. <laughs> This particular vi uh, live stream somehow got noticed by Vice. I don't know how, but all it took was this one article for this thing to go viral, and suddenly a, a million streams and 20,000 YouTube subscribers showed up, like, in a, in a flash, um, which is crazy. And so uh, li live streaming in general for music has been really good. It's been growing especially here in 2020, giant massive growth of people listening to live stream musics. Um, most of it is on YouTube. Very good time to hop, hop into this world. Um, and m many artists are going live uh, and their, their viewership uh, is actually surprised, very comparable to what we had achieved with our extreme death metal. Um, was not expecting that as a result. I uh, didn't know that that many people even li listen to that kind of music. <laughs> um, and how did the band feel? They, their minds were blown. <laughs> They're like, this is really weird. Skynet is writing our next album. <laughs> uh, there's nothing better in life than blowing one of your favorite artists' minds. Um, so at this point, I'm like, okay, we've been asking forgiveness a lot. Let's try asking permission. What if we just cold emailed musicians that we like and say, hey, do you want to collaborate? Um, so this is what we did with uh, uh, s several bands and, and electronic artists like the Red Chord, uh, Behold the Arctopus, uh, and, and Senathrak. Um, and we came up with this cool thing now that, that people are really into promote, uh, us promoting their new album with uh, an additional uh, generative live stream. So uh, recently, we, we did this for, within Senathrak, and we, we made a, a generative version of, of their record. fans went to their page bought the record and vice versa and it was all uh good fun and, and the band ha hung out in the live chat with us for the entire 10 hours which was a surreal experience uh, oh, we also got, got the chance to work with uk beatbox champion reaps one and we made this documentary <laughs> it's here. just in the distance <laughs> yeah I can already hear it growing. It does make me think of like an embryo. It's obviously still not me, but immediately the, the my harmonic, the shape of my mouth, I can start hearing in the, the audio that it's generating. It sounds... I mean, we we uh, made a music video together. So he, he he's in the, 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 the uh, anechoic chamber at Bell Labs, and he does a duet with his uh, sample RNN 
beatbox. Soon we were venturing off into new genres like free jazz uh, and making deep fake albums like this impersonating uh, John Coltrane album called Outer Helios. So just as a storytelling in in the description, we say, you know, way out beyond the heliosphere, an AI aboard NASA space probe Voyager 3, which doesn't exist, uh, generating free jazz broadcast via live stream 24-7 um, until we lose contact. Uh, clearly in, 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 not, not a real thing that happened, but journalists wrote about it as if it was real, and pretty soon... We were moving beyond just making deep fakes, and now we're making fake news. Uh, so, you know, that, that doesn't come without karmic justice. Pretty soon, we were being impersonated uh, by fans in the Russian-speaking space. Uh, for a long time, when you searched Databots, this location came up in Ukraine with a fake storefront. <laughs> um, they, they, they set up a, a, a fake YouTube channel. Um, they actually grabbed the Databots name, so we had to be Databots official. Uh, so then they, they grabbed the Databots official Facebook, so we had to become Databots official official. Uh, <laughs> so when, when Jukebox came out uh, just a few months ago, we took this opportunity to, uh, to impersonate Frank Sinatra. We're going to have him uh, sing a Britney Spears cover. You know, let, let's t ha have our hand at pop. And this is how it came out. You're toxic, I'm slipping under. So as one would expect, eventually in deepfake territory, you're going to run into maybe some legal battles here. So we got a YouTube takedown um, by representatives of Sinatra. Um, it's like, okay, this is a, a new thing uh, legally. Let, you know, let, let's have fun with this too. Uh, so we, we got legal help. We, we got the, the EFF uh, helped us. Um, La, uh, Emily J. Friedman and Benjamin LeClain from Lockett Brown uh, be became our, our legal representatives here. And we were able to counter, um, uh, uh, send a counter note, uh, a, a appeal this, t this takedown. Um, and a after a, a process that uh, took, you know, months, uh, actually we, we won and we, we got the, the video uh, reestablished. Um, and the reason this worked is because of fair use. And so I'm, I'm not a lawyer here, but my uh, best understanding of, of fair use is that uh, we won because in the style of is not an, inf an infringible offense. Um, sure, it, it uses the lyrics from Britney Spears, which is copyrighted, but the Sinatra stuff um, isn't copied from any particular Sinatra song. Uh, 
And also, actually, many of the fans didn't even think it really sounded like him that much. Uh, and, and also, too, a big one, uh, we are researchers publishing results for educational purposes and commentary like this very, very talk. Um, so that's how we're able to continue here. Uh, so Sinatra Bot lives again. We're, we're able to, to, to do our research um, because of donations we've gotten along the way. Um, thanks to through help from people that just enjoyed the music. Uh, nom 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 nom. This summer, we went ham on with Jukebox. We we set up a 36 GPU queuing system for training and uh, fine tune training and generating. Um, just trying to come up with new genres. So this is the example of like the JSON API that we made, um, making things like funk plus deathcore plus gent. Uh, we ended up with 7,000 new unreleased songs that we're going to slowly release and see what critics think and and see if we can come up with new styles that like human players will take inspiration from. For example, uh, this genre we call No Soul. It's, it's trained on like soul music. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, we're live streaming this um, in a secret live stream, unreleased. So uh, with all our extra GPU, we, th we thought we'd host a uh, residency for other AI musicians that were experimenting in this space, like uh, uh, Hexer Sismos uh, from Mexico City. Um, and so what, what he did was he uh, trained Jukebox on 40 gigabytes of tree ball music, which is this um, amazing dance style that fuses electro uh, EDM, electronic, and regional Mexican music. And that will soon be released. So uh, in, in reflection, after just uh, observing how all, all of these dozens of collaborations uh, turned out, we, we saw that electronic music producers very readily gravitated towards these raw audio models because of the, the ease of sampling and remixing. And we, we even made uh, interfaces for them that allowed them to navigate the, the you know tens of hours of audio material to find samples. However, bands weren't readily using the raw audio models to compose their songs. Pro uh, because of the difficulty of interpretation. Um, so how, how are we going to do this? Uh, actually, uh, you know, I, although I, at first we were, you know, uh, against symbolic music, uh, recently now we're returning to this uh, because of bands like uh, Seattle's Pound, who, who write all their music in Guitar Pro. Lots of bands use Guitar Pro, um, and it hasn't been the, really the focus of a machine learning generator just yet. So we uh, assembled a data set of 26,000 Guitar Pro songs uh, and made a tokenized sequence, uh, t tokenized format for sequence models, um, converting their, their byte format into uh, this kind of, you know, here are notes, it's event-based, it's similar to MuseNet um, for, for language models. Um, and and w one thing that I, I, I really wa wanted to achieve here when coming up with this format is that I, I wanted to be resilient to just chaos. Um, if, if, if I was tr gonna train on music XML, uh, XML format, you know, it can break. It, it has to be a certain way. And when you, are, you have that constraint, then you're sort of at the whim of, of overfitting more. Um, but, but here we designed it so that even complete total randomness, like, and, and random tokens are still gonna make interesting music. Um, and, 
mean, we, we like really push the, the randomness here. This is the, the entire 26,000 data set uh, on shuffle. Um, just a, a, cl a clip of it. Uh, it. It still sounds like something. Um, and this is going to help, you know, when pushing these models to do out of distribution things, um, like in the interpolating between latent spaces uh, that aren't in the training data, etc. Um, skip over that. So, in conclusion, the end is near. We are selling merch. Um, actually, I'll just show you this real quick. Uh, we, we also make SoundCloud bots. This is our la latest SoundCloud bot. Uh, th these bots go out and f find music to remix and, and post it. Uh, and you can do it like hundreds of times a day before you get banned. Um, he here we took the DDSP's flute model, mixed it with... Uh, oh, 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 oh. Instant memes. Right. Okay. So, the takeaways for you here from the talk is um, Google's collaboration with Yacht and the Flaming Lips were notable, but you don't have to be Google to do that. I en encourage you to just cold email your favorite musician and be like, hey, I'm an AI researcher. I'm working on the, the cutting edge music tools. These things will not be in your DIW. Um, it's really interesting. Do, do you want to work together? And for us, the vast majority of these emails we send out come back with uh, enthusiasm. So pl please uh, go out and engage the music culture. It's and while you're at it, you know, have some fun. Um, and when you're publishing your results, you could do it like this. Um, but if you choose to go in this direction, it could become an adventure for you. Uh, thanks. We are Databots, and please uh, let, let us know your, your Twitter handle so we can follow you um, and subscribe for more music. All right. Claps all around. I'm sure if you were uh, in front of an audience, you'd be receiving a standing ovation for <laughs> not only a, a talk that goes into the depths of um, you know state-of-the-art machine learning applied to audio and music, but taking these out into the real world to create and um for some reason uh, what do the russians want with the data bots theme <laughs> um yeah I, I don't know i, I think they just they really, really like it. it i think I they're, they're just, just fans and, um, and uh, it's just kind of love <laughs> do, is there still an escalation going on of domains <laughs> um no uh, they, they actually they have, they have data bots not fun, fun and we have data bots that's fun, fun. <laughs> okay there's a question from the the slack uh awesome talk cj um a lot of databots work does not enforce the tempo constraint the no soul example is the first i've heard that approaches a steady beat so is it possible to introduce a rigid tempo as a constraint to your work such as the floor on the floor of techno or halftime beats of dubstep uh, uh, sure. sure. Um, in the, the no soul case, we uh, use that use jukebox, which is very good at keeping a steady beat. And actually, it's um, it's so good at doing a steady beat that uh, making it do cha chaotic music um, wa wasn't as obvious to us. Um, I think lo lots of people are going to try to make steady beat music. I'm I'm really interested in just mu extreme music that I, that I like. I like that is chaotic and, and mathy and try, trying to avoid constraints, um, just tr trying to g give it stuff that, and w that it can learn from, uh, you know, um, and generate unconditionally uh, is what I find fascinating. And maybe that's just my ADD. <laughs> yeah, I, I've noticed that uh, some people, well, there's a, different approaches to working with AIs and music generation. And one is to, um, uh, work with the materials that are generated as sort of raw materials and then uh, polish those up, reform them. But you have taken everything out and 
put it out there as this is the raw uh, music that's output by the algorithm. That's your sort of aesthetic with this uh, these approaches. Mm -hmm. Letting the machine music stand on its own. Where are you going next? Right. Um, so I'm really interested in uh, pushing out this guitar pro uh, data set. So researchers, uh, dozens of people in the community have reached out and interested in working with it. We also have a, we're releasing a MIDI pack as well of the 26,000 songs, which if you have a MIDI model already using lock MIDI or uh, something else, this can augment that. Um, so p please re reach out to us if you're interested. Awesome. Thanks so much for taking time to talk to this uh, AI conference, AI Music Creativity Conference. Take care and stay safe. Cheers.